Welcome back to the Strength and Speed Podcast. I'm your host, Strength and Speed owner and Mudgear Hannibal Race Pro, Evan Preparis. This is part of the OCR Reports 30 Podcasts Hat September. So we are pumping out podcasts all month. Make sure you're checking out the other channels, Obstacle Running Adventures, the OCR Report, Carlo and Fran. Uh, who else? Uh, OCR Talk, did I say them already? A lot of podcasts coming out. And also World's Toughest Podcast. This is coming out on the 28th, so yesterday was Fran and Carlo episode, tomorrow is the OCR report, and then we finish it out on Monday the 30th with Obstacle Running Adventures. Plus, make sure you check out the feed. The feed is the Endurance Supplement Superstore. I'm going to drop the link in the show notes down below. Please click through that link. That helps support the program, even if you don't buy anything. It just shows traffic going to that site. Feed's got everything you need. Endurance Supplements, got Hammer Nutrition, my favorite. It's got... Little pickle juice bottles. I just picked up some vegan protein, uh, which I'm trying for the first time. Uh, These specific brands. I've tried some other brands. This is some, I think Raw is the name of the brand. So two different brands of vegan protein that I'm trying out. I'm not going vegan, but due to my current job slash life in the seminary program at Hellenic College of Holy Cross in Brookline, Massachusetts, which is where I live now, uh, there are some fast days which I have to be vegan. So The feed's been a great option because it allows me to shop around and find some vegan protein options because I'm always, as an athlete uh, who also wants to follow religious practices, right, I want to make sure I'm getting my adequate protein, getting enough ability to recover, uh, but then also staying within uh, the guidelines set forth. All right, let's get to today's episode. So with all these podcasts coming out, I was kind of worried that I was going to touch on a topic that's already been touched on by another podcast. So for this episode, we're going to do the OCR book buyer's guide. So I'm going to basically give you a rundown of the books I've written for OCR, why they're good, why, you know, in what order I would pick them up or which ones, you know, if you're limited time. Talk about each one a little bit, uh, discuss them a little bit further, just so you have more information. and Maybe if you have an idea of a uh, present to pick up for someone. So let's start at the top. The first one I released, Strength and Speed's Guide to Elite Obstacle Course Racing. So it did have it. That was released in 2016. There was an update. I think it was 2020. The new Strength and Speed's Guide to Elite Obstacle Course Racing. You want to pick up the new Strength and Speed's Guide to Elite Obstacle Course Racing, not the older one. The older one, I think, is it's like 15 bucks. The newer one, a little closer to 20 And the newer one, basically, I got 50 more podiums, updated a lot of the information in there. I actually simplified some of the training plans to make it easier for people to understand. It just has a ton of great information. I would argue it is the most, for the value per dollar, it is the single best thing you can buy for obstacle course racing. There's just a ton of knowledge. It goes through exercise. It goes through uh, diet and supplements, basically your nutrition. It goes through the importance of rest and recovery and how to maximize that because we all know you get stronger resting and recovering. You don't actually get stronger on the road or in the gym or in the obstacle course racing gym. It's that stimulus that's giving to your body and the ability to rest and recover Spike that human growth hormone while you're sleeping at night just through adequate rest is what helps make you better. It uh, talks about mindset, talks about m- uh, motivation, kind of getting started in the competitive drive there. Then I do a deep dive of obstacles, basically breaking it down. You know, here's an obstacle. Here's some techniques you want to consider when going for it. Uh, a lot of them I, I do like multiple levels, right? So monkey bars, I, I talk about, you know, we can do two hands per bar facing forward, um, giving you the most secure, or you can skip bars. Or you can kind of do that monkey swing. Uh, I personally like to go sideways with opposing grip hands. That way you're getting that nice good traction. And then I go through some old, basically all the, all the common obstacles, mud pits. Um, and I kind of deep dove and really thought, thought about what makes what would make this obstacle easier or what would make the following obstacles easier. So uh, when I go through the mud pits, I talk about instead of putting your hands on where your palms are going to be touching the mud, you make a fist and that's how you go through crawls and that's how you go through some of the mud pits. So your knuckles get muddy, not your actual palms, which you're going to need for the grip obstacles later. I was talking about specifically how to train for some of those obstacles, right? So not all of us have access to a rig, not all of us have access to a ninja gym, but there are things you can do in your home gym, like a normal conventional gym, that make it easier to train obstacle course racing. Essentially using, one of the things I like to do is use rig holds as my handles for all of my pulley movements, right? So if I'm doing a single arm lat pull down, I'm going to put a rig grip there. I'm not going to use the nice bar with the good grip on there. I'm going to use the nunchuck grip. People are going to look at you weird in the gym. That's fine. You're training for something. Uh, They're not. They're probably just there to lose a couple pounds or whatever. So kind of ignore them. And, you know, maybe they'll come up and ask you a question. I usually get 
I'll get a decent amount of questions about those and the fat grips, these rubber sleeves that go over the barbell or dumbbell. That way, kind of everything is a grip strength training exercise. I kind of break it down, talk about speed training, talk about aerobic conditioning, uh, the importance of lactic threshold work, the importance of VO2 max work. And then I kind of go out and lay out a plan for you. I have 12 training plans total in there. So um, for each of these levels, it's broken into, you know, kind of beginner, intermediate, and advanced. And there's one for kind of like the 5K distance, the sprint. There's one for more of like the super distance or that OCR world championship type distance. There's one for like beast distance or kind of like a shorter ultra in the obstacle course racing world, that is. And then there's one for like real ultra. Oh, not real ultra. Long ultra. So 12 plus hour type thing or eight plus hours. And again, I have beginner and media advanced for all those with different mileage peaks that you can top out at. And when I'm laying out a training plan, plan for someone, I generally recommend there should be one workout each week where you look at it and you're like, oh, that's, that's not going to be fun. That that kind of lets you know you're you're pushing up against your limit. Um, you don't want to have every workout of that week look like that because then you're going to be not motivated and you're going to have trouble training. Uh, but you also don't want the opposite extreme where you look at every workout and you're like, yeah, it's a joke. No problem. Also, I have a chapter in there about learning from other sports. Basically, before I found obstacle course racing, I bounced around between different sports. I've stolen those lessons learned, which is the whole premise behind this podcast. A couple more ways to gain a competitive edge, talking about mindset. A little bit about uh, finding your ideal race, which at this point, some of that information is a little bit old, so that's a little more of history at this point. And then finally, the back of the book is filled with interviews with elite obstacle course racers, which again, if I was a better business person, I probably wish would have taken that book and separate it out into its own book because there's that much information in the back. You know, I got I got Hobie Call back there, which is interesting because that interview is old. And I got Lindsey Webster, also an old interview, because those two are from 2016. But it's super cool because Lindsey was like on her rise at that point. So you got to see her mindset very early in her obstacle course racing career before she was the multi-time OCR world champion at all these different distances. Got Michelle Warnke in there, which Michelle Warnke Burma as her full name is. I uh, got the Carigliano's, Air Force Ken and Rachel. Uh, I've interviewed with myself, so you can hear like more about my background. Ashley Samples, who's got so many podiums. Thomas Von Tonder. Um, and if you're a little more into hybrid fitness, uh, Morgan Schulz. Uh, she was big on the high rock scene and the Decafit there. So a lot of good information in the back and throughout the whole book. So if you're going to pick up one book, pick up the new Strength and Speed Guide to Elite Obstacle Course Racing. Like I said... You cannot beat the value for what it is. And as of this recording, where we're in 2024, it is still the only book on competitive obstacle course racing. There's been a lot of other books written about beginner obstacle course racing, kind of like getting your feet well and like, oh, here's what your first OCR is going to look like. This is the only one on competitive obstacle course racing. And if you're already an elite competitor, maybe you're faster than me, maybe you're better than me, I still guarantee you will learn something from this book. I guarantee it. And if... I'll tell you what, if you're an elite, you're faster than me, you've got, you've beaten me at a bunch of races, you buy the book and then read it and tell me there was nothing in there of value, uh, you know, I'll send you the refund. I'll send you the cost of the book back. So, but for that, you're going to have to order from my website. So you cannot, you can order all of these off of Amazon. Uh, the digital versions are exclusively off of Amazon, or you can order off my website. I do get a better cut of the profits off my website. So I recommend ordering off that. But if you want to do digital again, click through teamstrengthspeed.com in the store and then go to the digital through there. There's a link on, in the store. Uh, that'll uh, gives me, like, again, gives me credit, gives our podcast credit. So my second book uh, was the Mud Run Guide's Ultra OCR Bible, or I just tend to call it the Ultra OCR Bible at this point because Mud Run Guide is largely defunct. The website is still up. My articles are still up on there, but it is not very active. You get, you get about one article every six months there. So Mudra, the Ultra OCR Bible is very similar to the New Strength and Speed Guide to Elite Obstacle Course Racing, except it's exclusively focused on Ultra OCR. So you're going to get, in addition to some of the information, you're basically getting a deep dive into the world of Ultra OCR. I'm Ultra OCR man. I've got, I think, 30 OC, Ultra OCR podiums at this point. So this is really my specialty. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm competitive at the smaller events and the lower prize purses in the shorter distance stuff. At Ultra OCR, you know, top 10 at World's Toughest four different times as an individual. Came in second and first as a team back when you, the two teammates had to run for all 24 hours together. So I go through 
Very similar format I used for the New Strength Speed Guide for Elite Obstacle Racing that I used for the Ultra OCR Bible. Uh, it does give you three training plans in there. It does give you obstacle-specific techniques. The obstacle-specific techniques are focused more for safety and stability over speed, right? If I save a second flipping over a wall but bust my ankle in an Ultra OCR, probably not the best technique. Instead, you want to conserve energy. You want to use as minimal muscle strength as possible. You just want to get over the wall in a controlled manner without spiking your heart rate and continue your race because you probably have another 6, 8, 12, maybe even 24 hours to make up that two seconds you lost by not hurling yourself over the wall. Just like my other book, I do a bunch of interviews in the back, again, talking about uh, ultra OCR from different athletes' perspective. You get their age, you get their weight, you get their height. Uh, we get athletes like Morgan Mackay in there, uh, Rhea Kobel's in there, uh, Christina Honeybadger, my teammate from World Toughest Mudder when we won the championship, uh, Wesley, Red, Dr. Red Tights Kerr. I uh, got an interview with Trevor Psychos in there, the most recent podcast guest. So we've you've heard about all the awesome stuff he's done. Again, this is we're gonna jump back in time a couple of years, and you get to hear his opinion from like two thousand late two thousand or it's about two thousand seventeen. I think is when I published this one. I have not updated it since then, mostly because I feel like the information is really good. Uh, I did get a bunch more podium since then, but I don't. I haven't really changed much in my ultra distance OCR training or competing, I think a lot of this stuff just still holds true. So if you're gonna if you're an ultra person, I would pick up the Ultra OCR Bible over the new strength and speed guide to elite obstacle course racing. Uh, if you're someone who primarily does short course and is interested in ultra OCR, and then this is the only book on ultra distance obstacle course racing. So that would be a high recommendation to pick up. Speaking of ultra distance obstacle course racing, we'll talk about my biography real quick. Biography is Ultra OCR Man. This is the only one... That's not true anymore. Uh, this is the only one that was professionally produced on audiobook. So most of the books I have now converted over to audiobook on Audible, but they use an AI-generated voice. It sounds pretty good. I've listened to... I've listened to parts of them, and it, it comes across good. The, the two training books I just mentioned is all good for audio, except for the training charts. So if you pick it up on audio, send me proof that you picked it up, and I will send you the training charts. The training charts are not going to come across good on audio. You can just skip, you basically skip that whole chapter. But the rest of the information about the obstacle technique, that will come across good on audiobook. Ultra OCR Man from Special Forces Soldier to Record Setting Obstacle Course Racer talks a little bit about my childhood, talks about my time in the military. It's got a lot of fun slash funny war stories in there. Uh, maybe some not-so-funny war stories. Uh Various times where I almost died, probably, let's see, two drownings, one my my platoon almost drowned, uh, platoon's been hit by lightning, uh, I got hit, uh, struck, I got, I touched something electric, almost, almost died there, a couple of bombs, a couple of gunfights, a couple of RPGs, mix it here and there. Long story short, I used a lot of the mindset and took that over to the world of ultra distance obstacle course racing. So if you want to hear some of the, you know, how, how I build my mindset, you can get the foundation there, plus got a cool bunch of cool war stories. Uh, I know Trevor Psychos just picked up a copy of Ultra OCR Man. If you want his his opinion, feel free to reach out to him. Uh, as a fellow World's Tough, or as a, he's a multiple-time World's Toughest Mudder champion, you can get his opinion on it. And then I go through and I talk about World's Toughest Mudder, uh, my first experience there, but then also a bunch of the Ultra OCR charity events I did. So in that book specifically has the... Um, OCR America 1, seven days of OCR marathons across the country. It has the 24-hour uh, OCR treadmill, OCR mill, 24. And it's got the 2017 when I tried to do all the 24-hour OCRs in the world. It kind of takes you through those journeys. Gives you a little bit of ex exposure to the world of OCR. What I liked, I tried to write it in a matter where anyone can, anyone can enjoy it, right? So... Someone who has never done a single OCR can pick it up and read it and and love it and get a feel for what the sport looks like. I also wrote it referencing athletes in the sport. Um, so when you read it, if you're like a fan of OCR, you'll be able to read it and go, oh yeah, I know this person. That was the cool, you know, cool you gave this person a shout out and stuff like that. So I tried to give shout outs a lot where I could without bogging it down, just listing names of OCR athletes that would bore the non-OCR fan. 
Again, that's on digital hard copy and uh, full audiobook there. As I was on the, I started my quote unquote professional obstacle course racing career, I was on the Conquer the Gauntlet Protein. So one of the books I wrote is called Conquering the Gauntlet, Your Guide to Completing the Midwest's Favorite Obstacle Course Racing Series. So this is a deep dive onto just CTG specifically. So it talks a little bit more, it talks just like about scheduling for your, your fitness, but it's really like generic terms. So I don't give you like a 10 week training plan. I give you a week model and then in that week model, I give you beginner, intermediate, and advanced. You can plug in kind of your own workout. So that gives you an idea. For, I know some people don't like following, you know, to the to the letter workouts. Um, this gives you an idea of like how to lay out your fitness. Plus, it goes through all the obstacles that were ever at CTG. It gives you not only tips for preparing for that obstacle, but also like how to train for it. So it gives you like here's how to do the obstacle when you're at the race, but also here's a bunch of techniques you can use to prep for it. So when you do the obstacle in the race, you're not um, overwhelmed and panicked, right? Uh, there are also a couple of workouts in there. I think we got about 10 workouts in there. Just kind of a couple examples of uh, various workouts you can do using a mix of equipment. And then uh, talk about, you know, building some of your own training accessories and uh, some basic. This is a little bit more of like a beginner book. Uh, that being said, if you're specifically prepping for Conquer the Gauntlet, and if you haven't heard the news, John Taylor, the he owns a ninja gym in St. Louis, which I'm forgetting the name of. I think it's like Warrior Sports or something like that. He bought Conquer the Gauntlet. So this is going to be the last year, as I talked about on the Obstacle Running Adventures podcast, the last episode I was on. But John Taylor swooped in, bought the entire brand, so it will continue on into 2025 and beyond. I do not know what his plans are in the future. I'm sure we're going to get him on the podcast. And I'm sure some of the other, some of the other podcasts are going to grab him as well, interview him, talk to him about what his plans are with the series, if he's expanded to multiple venues, or maybe you know just do one venue for next year and then kind of look look at how things are going and, and figure it out from there. But John is an awesome dude. I've raced against him a handful of times. Um, masters athlete. He's fast. He's podium level, um, or just he's he's basically always on the masters podium, and then he's. Uh, he's still, he's a threat for the overall podium as well. So more of a ninja background. So he's bringing a lot of like the ninja people in, which is going to be cool. I'm curious to see what he does with CTG. I could see it going back a little bit more to the harder obstacle days, like there was in 17, 18 time frame. So it should be interesting. It should be interesting. But yeah, conquering the gauntlet that is available again, Amazon. Hard copy digital. I think again. I think I turned that into an audiobook via AI, so you can check that out as well. Speaking of conquer the gauntlet, uh, what are we on? Book five. Book five was CTG protein workouts to go. So if you again, if you don't like, I don't want to follow a set plan. I you just a little more of the CrossFit style. CrossFit they just post workouts and people just do them. Uh, from my outside perspective, it looks like no rhyme or reason. It's just like random workouts to make you suffer. CTG Pro Workouts to Go is kind of like what that is. Uh, it's not organized in any sort of like do this, then this, then this. It's more organized by topic. All right, I'm in a hotel gym. What can I do that is OCR specific? So it gives you a bunch of workouts. Or I want to do a VO2 max workout to improve my max speed in running. Or I want to do a lactic threshold workout to improve my ability to sustain a hard pace for about 10k, right? So it's broken in more of the topics, or maybe I'm at a ninja gym and I want to do a workout there. And you can go through each chapter based off of you know where you are, what your goal is, and it will give you about 10 workouts per topic that will allow you to figure out. You know, you pick one of those, and that's that's a good workout. Some of them are scalable. Sometimes it has like an easy, medium, and hard. Other times, just it just kind of lists the workout. But that is a cool book that lets you kind of plug and play into whatever your existing schedule is. Or maybe you, you have a schedule where it's like, all right, I'm doing one VO2 max, one like a threshold workout a week, but I don't know what I want to do for those two workouts. You can Again, you can pick up the CTG protein workouts to go, pick a workout, plug it in, plug it in. Side note, that is what I recommend for those of you who focus more on short course guy. All right, next book, uh, Mud Run Guides, OCR, Ultimate OCR Bucket List. So the bucket list book. Oh man, I wrote this one and rewrote this one and then rewrote it and then I just eventually published it. <laughs> it it basically lists all the different 
races that were available at the time and were popular at the time and goes through what makes them unique and what makes them cool. At this point, I'd say largely more of a historical reference than anything else. Right, A lot of the websites listed in it are, are just not going to be functioning at this point. If you are a race owner, a Mythic Race, a Hazelwood, a um, now the new CTG, if you want to get some ideas from a race, I would. Those are that's a great book to pick up. If you're just kind of like a want a little more know about a little more about history, uh, like Trevor Psychos was talking about on the last podcast, another great option. You can pick it up and kind of see some of the most unique brands uh, that are in in there. I wrote the majority of it. That being said, I got a bunch of. Con- Contributors from Mud, Mud Run Guide and Strength and Speed to kind of chime in, uh, who had actually been to some of these events, right? So Phil Hucky, I know from wrote War X's section, and um, yeah, I think did Melissa Dugan from Tough Mudder write the uh, Urban Mudder one? I think she did. It's, it's kind of getting a little blurry, but a lot of cool stuff in there. If you want to know about the the X-rated OCR that I think lasted for a year in Florida, that talks about that in there. If you want to know about Tandem Race which was a two-man race, but you were, like, tied together. Uh, that's in there. A lot of cool stuff, a lot of cool ideas in there. Uh, you can check that out. Plus, kind of gives you different things to highlight, right? So talk about, like, the races with the best party or the basic races with the best swag or uh, for the competitors with the best podium prizes um, besides money. Obviously, like, the more money, the better, right? But uh, some of the brands like CTG, those gauntlets, right? Those are, that's... To me, that's one of the best prizes in OCR. All right, moving on to my last two books. Uh, I started writing a little bit shorter, a little bit more concisely, and a little bit less concerned about length. Just wanted to make sure I got all the right information out there. So uh, my book on endurance, over the course of the... See, this podcast started in January 2017. Over the seven or so years, eight years of this podcast... Talked to a lot of endurance people. Got a lot of great pointers. Um, I condensed them all into a book, right? So you can go back and listen to every podcast. Feel free to. They're available on YouTube. They're available on uh, the whatever podcast streaming platform you're listening to. You, uh, iTunes, uh, Google Play, whatever it may be. Side note, again, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're eventually going to... this uh, The podcast on this platform, iTunes, Google Play... Spotify, all the others. Well, then she go away. It's probably January or February 2025. Uh, so start subscribing to us on YouTube. That's where we'll be pushing our podcast content through. But on endurance, I basically take quotes and lessons from all the different athletes I interviewed, and I condense them into a book. This one, I, I probably didn't do a very good job marketing this one. Honestly, this one is... I, I think all my books are good, obviously, because I wrote them, but... I think this one is like the mud, the ultra OCR Bible sells really well. The uh, new strength and speed guide to elite obstacle course racing sells really well on endurance. I'd say is my biggest underseller. Like I think the value is not, I think not as many people buy it, but more people should because of the value in there. I know some of my endurance friends have read it and they're like, Oh, this is great. Like you put into words what's in my brain, but I had no way of like putting it on paper. It's like basically a step-by-step guide. I call it a practical guide to unlocking the secrets of superhuman performance. If you've been in the obstacle course racing, the ultra difference, ultra world for a little while, eventually you get to a point where the insane seems completely normal. Like when my friend's like, oh, I'm running 100 miles this week. And I'm like, cool, have fun. Um, if you want to know, if you want to feel like that, where like people do the most insane stuff and it just becomes completely normal, read on endurance. It will help you break down those walls of what you think is possible and allow you to push farther. Endurance sports is all about mental strength. And this book is basically like the the mindset book for endurance. So pick up on endurance. I Again, I really like it. It's probably 105 pages or so. Uh, 96 pages. It's 96 pages. So it is a quick read. If you're motivated, you can sit down and read it in one night. Uh, you can read it the week of your ultra and kind of get that last minute boost. I also recommend that. I think, uh, ultra, again, ultra distance is so mindset specific. When I would get ready for a big race, world's tough, as a lot of times I would listen to, or a lot of times I'd listen to ultra specific audiobooks in my prep for it, just kind of priming my brain 
to be like, we're about to go deep into the pain cave. Here's what it's going to look like. If you, you better be ready for it because it's going to hurt and we're going to do, we're going to crush it. Right. So I would re-listen to Matt Fitzgerald. How bad do you want it? I really listened to, I didn't even really listen to my own book, Ultra OCR Man, right? Cause it talks about some of my personal mental struggles that I was going through on some of these races and these in multi-day, multi-hour uh, endurance charity events. And it talks about those in depth and it allows me to kind of like prime my brain to get it ready for what we're going to have to go through at whatever the upcoming race is going to be. And it worked pretty well because I did about, I don't know, 10, 12 hour races, 10, 12 hour races and podiumed at all of them. I think six of them or seven of them were individual and three or four of them were team. So must be doing something right. And my last OCR, this one's not even OCR specific. Actually, the last two weren't even OCR specific. On endurance is really good for anyone who's interested in endurance sports. Um, and that endurance is a pretty of a widely flexible term. So if you think endurance is 10K, then this book will help. If you think endurance is only things greater than 50 miles, then this book will help. All right, so that's on endurance. Final book I released that was kind of like a little more OCR focused was called The Sponsored Athlete. Essentially, I walked you through the steps I use to get sponsors, the steps I use to maintain sponsors, and uh, how you kind of leverage a little bit of extra work to get a lot of free stuff. A lot of the benefits I've gotten from OCR um, come in the form of comp race entries, come in the form of product. Um, it, I mean, you would have to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars if you if you hand purchased everything I've gotten for free from, you know, producing articles and from writing race reviews and from uh, all, all these different things I've, I've done for the sport, you would have to spend such an absurd amount of money. It would, it would bankrupt a lot of people. So uh, the sponsored athletes kind of how I did all those things um, and how I worked to not only, I enjoy making OCR content, but I, how I also turned something that was like an expensive hobby into something that produces money for me. Not a lot of money, but it essentially did make up all my costs and then give me a bunch of benefits on top of it. You know, and maybe you're like, oh, but Ed, that's different, Evan, because you're you race more and you're um, you're more podiums and blah blah blah. There are tips you can use that will make you better in that book and reduce costs. And he, like, here's one of the simple ones I like to use is you know family sponsorship, right? So you're it's Christmas or it's a birthday and you don't know what. Um, like you get enough stuff, right? So you you can tell a family member, hey, can you quote unquote sponsor me for this race? And then they essentially pay for your race entry as a as the gift. And then in response, you send them like pictures from the race and updates. Maybe depending on how much they pay and how you know what what maybe they cover travel and stuff like that. You send them updates, so they're it. It's like they're part of the process. They're part of the giving. When my daughter uh, had this fundraiser for her dance thing where you essentially you pay, pick a day of the month and you pay that amount of dollars and it helps fund her like jackets and her dance competitions. My wife and I created a group text message and anyone who had donated money was now part of like the dance update, right? So anytime there's a live stream, we'd send them the live stream link. Anytime there was results and we had pictures, we'd send them the pictures, right? So they're paying a little bit, they're helping you and then they're getting a lot of feedback and they're getting to be part of the process. So that's an example, right? My daughter's obviously not a professional dancer. She's nine. So, um, but we used essentially a principle from the sponsored athlete for her amateur dance competition. So really anyone can do it. Uh, it does talk about the, the higher your performance, right? If you're John Alban, you obviously don't have to do as much social media presence um, because you're, you're out there crushing it or you're Ryan Atkins. Uh, but if you're lower on level podium, you know, then you do have to do more social media presence. So brands know who you are. And at the end of the day, most brands just want to see their product out in the world, right? You know, Squirrel's Nut Butter doesn't know the difference between, you know, um, I don't know, Ash and Abraham, one of the guys on my team, and Thomas Plush, and me, and, um, you know, Leah Hensley, one of the Strength and Speed girls, right? They don't know the difference between any of those people. They just see when someone posts and someone tags them and sees them standing on a podium. That's all I know. Right, so whether you podium at this, you know, this major race that everyone in the OCR community cares about, or whether you podium at like, you know, Muddy Hutch 5K, they generally—I mean, they, they care a little bit, but like, 
they generally don't necessarily know the difference. So that you can use a lot of that stuff to get benefits, to give brands exposure, um, to get compensated for your work. Uh, and that's all included in the sponsored athlete. That one, again, is like 100 pages. Uh, that one, I, I'd all say is for the value, it is it has not sold, again, probably because I haven't marketed as hard as I should, uh, but it has not sold as much as it should, right? The sponsored athlete and endurance, for the price you pay, I think they're like, I think they're just over ten dollars. And again, it, it's just like I marked them low because I wanted people to read these books, and I think they're valuable. Um, I probably should mark them up, to be honest with you. Uh, the value is a lot is a lot higher than what I'm charging, but I think it's important for the OCR people. I, I didn't want I didn't want the, the we we have enough pay expensive things in OCR parking, you know, race entry fees, shoes. All, we have all this different stuff. I didn't want to add another giant expense to people's OCR racing. I wanted something a little bit more manageable um, that they can buy, pick up, and have a positive result from. So that brings us to my latest book, which you just released earlier this month. It is called, uh, so you, you've gotten all the fitness books out of the way. We are now into the crossover point, the combination to fitness self slash self-protection book. So I just released on September 5th, Tiga Tactics, runner's guide tiga tactics i can't even remember the name of my book <laughs> it's called run if you can destroy if you must tiga tactics guide for uh runners walkers and hikers for self-protection so i talk about you know as athletes we are out there running a lot we are training we're on the roads we're on the trails it talks about things you can do to make sure you're safe you know and it, it, it doesn't necessarily mean like oh i'm, I'm constantly worried that someone's gonna like jump out and attack me that is part of the threat right but part of the threat is like just making sure you don't get hit by a car right like that's that's a pretty big threat so talks about situational awareness talks about what you should be dressing with like what you should be dressing like you know talks about sensory deprivation you know a lot of people will put headphones in and just completely block themselves out to the world which may not be the best idea depending on where you're running in talks about actual fighting so like you do get attacked Here's how you defend yourself. And again, you don't need a you know, multicolored belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. You don't need a black belt in karate. You don't need to spend all your free time researching knives and guns uh, like I tend to do. But it gives you the, the basis. So I use Tiga Tactics methodology, which if you've listened to this podcast at this point, I'm sure you've heard me talk about them multiple times. But they have essentially distilled fighting down to here's the bare bones of what you need to know to protect yourself. If you're interested in more, you can go a lot deeper. But Tiga Taxis is the, that's what I teach my wife. That's what I teach my kids. Uh, that's what I teach my family members. It is distilled. Uh, Conrad and Patrick, who I also host a different podcast with called Tiga Taxis Podcast, just have so much knowledge. Um, I use their program. It's just, I, I, I just, I just can't say enough good things about them. So that book, the hard copy is available on Amazon and will be available off my website. The digital copy as of this release of this podcast will be about $10 for about two more days, and then it jumps in price to about 20 bucks. So if you listen to this, I would pick it up immediately and not wait. And I'll also drop those links in the show notes down below. That's another book. Uh, I suspect because I'm kind of newer to the martial arts publishing world, that will not, I guarantee that will not sell as well as some of my OCR books. That being said, there is just so much information. I cram so much information into that book. It's just a ton of like, it's really, it's really dense with knowledge for self protection. Not only do I use I use primarily Tiga tactics tactics as the methodology. That being said, right, I spent twenty years in the military, uh, most of it in special forces. I've learned a thing or two about security and self protection and situational awareness from that. And then about four years of my life downrange in various combat zones. So I pull lessons from that as examples to help drive home points from Tiga Tactics. So you can pick that up. Again, those are my books. I know there's some other books available out there uh, that have to do with obstacle course racing. Like I said, most of them are kind of beginner focused. I have not read a lot of them, mostly because I didn't want my work to get influenced by other people's work. And then we do have athletes like Trevor Sykos, who I just had on the last podcast, uh, Dear Grandma Rose, he talks about his... Uh, time in the United States Marine Corps. So uh, you can check those out too. I've heard there's some other books where they're they're kind of like hybrid athlete focused. 
Uh, that being said, those are not those aren't OCR people. Initially, they saw OCR as a market, came into it, kind of like Blegmitz. My like the, all this stuff was built ground up OCR focused on OCR, right? It's not. I wasn't an author for other fitness brands, and then I came into OCR. I was a fitness guy, found OCR, loved it, committed 100% to the sport, right? That's what I've been doing the last decade of my life. Spent most of my weekends just traveling for OCR, 350 yards, right? Like, I, I am in, I am in the, I'm a bit as deep as in the industry as you can get. I've worked for Tough Mudder when I did Infinite Hero Challenge. I've got Strength Speed Podcasts, been going on for eight years, right? I'm part of the OCR community, part of that sport, just like guys like Mike Stefano, Obstacle Running Adventure, just like Will Hicks, the OCR report, right? These are people ground up OCR. We're not trainers who are coming in trying to make a quick butt a buck out of OCR and then and then moving on to the next thing. So I, obviously I like my own circle. I recommend supporting uh, those types of people. If you check out Tiga Tactics, uh, Run If You Can, Destroy If You Must, my latest book, uh... I'm going to plug one other thing I'm working on right now besides the Tiga Tactics podcast. Um, I just started a Patreon page for like the, I don't know, it's the third time I think I've started, but I'm serious this time. <laughs> I just started a Patreon page to talk about some of my martial arts related stuff. So in the Patreon page for my martial arts, I'll drop that link in the show notes down below. I'm basically going to blitz it for the next month or two, just flood it with content so people get their value off, people who sign up early, and then get it to a more sustainable pace for 2025 and beyond that's going to be talking about not only if you know if you have no background in any sort of martial arts you'll find some value in that because i will talk about some basics you know the basic strikes and stuff like that basic grappling and stuff like that uh basic blade and, and firearm stuff but then i'll also talk more about more advanced stuff so there will be a component that talks about mindset i will tell a bunch of war stories i know in the last podcast that i talked about with trevor i said some of the stories i don't tell publicly because i i think people are going to judge and um i don't think they'll have anything of value to add i will tell some of those stories on the uh the combative my combatives like patreon page um because i think if you're on that page you're probably interested in tactics you're probably interested in self-protection and lessons learned and i think through my personal experience i can share some of those lessons learned and pass them over to someone who's going to value them uh for their good and their bad decisions so you'll get some war stories on there. You'll get some of the lessons I learned from special forces, from various. I mean, I've just been through so many special operations courses that are run by civilians and through the military. I will share with you some of the tips from those. I will share with you tips from a bunch of the martial arts seminars I've attended. I'm not going to just reproduce the seminar, right? I'm not stealing people's brands and just re republishing it. But I will be like, oh, here's a course I went to. Here's something interesting about it. Here's why you might want to attend. Or maybe not. Maybe you just want to listen to what I have to say. Uh, this is going to be a lot of good content over there. And just like Tiga Tactics methodology, I'm going to use the mindset, skill set, tool set portion, right? So I'll talk a lot about mindset. Skill set, I'll talk about like, all right, here's how to throw a punch, here's how to throw a weapon, etc. cetera. Um, and then tool set, a bunch of knife reviews and a bunch of uh, other reviews for self, self-protection self items. And then the final part, uh, I will talk about some physical fitness as well because I think some martial artists get that uh that gut that chi gut like um not to pick on steven Seagal, right he's got like he's gotten sort of round uh and a lot of martial artists that are older tend to look like that where they have like this giant gut uh because they stop working out they just kind of go through the motions so i'm gonna talk about fitness i'm gonna talk about nutrition again using some of the less learned from obstacle course racing applying it to uh combatives in the martial arts world and then the last thing i'm gonna talk about is uh religion Again, if you've been following my podcast, you might know that I'm in seminary now. So I go to Brookline, Helena College of Holy Cross in Brookline, Massachusetts. And uh, I'm going to draw connections between um, ethics and, and martial arts and teaching lethal stuff, right, as a member of the military and Christianity and why I think that some of that stuff is important. So um, not quite, it's not going to be like quite full on apologetics, deep dive into Christianity, but you will get. You'll get a, more of a Christian flavor over there if you're interested in that, if you're interested in combat, if you're interested in war stories, if you're interested in just uh, protecting yourself or you kind of like some of the content I've been doing. I'm going to gonna price it pretty cheap uh, at the time of this release and then uh, I'll probably wait about a month or two and then raise the price a little bit more. It won't be super expensive, but um, I think I'm going to start like it's literally going to be $2 to get access to all the videos. 
and then I'll probably bump it up to like five or ten uh, from that point forward. So, in addition, it'll be not only short court, short content stuff. You know, here's a five ten minute video, but then I'm gonna try once a month do like a long form content. So the seminar I did for Tiga Tactics, that webinar, uh, where I talked for basically an hour talking about fitness as it relates to martial arts. I'm gonna try to release one of those a month. So at least that's the plan going forward. And uh, I hope you check it out. If you like the content I'm producing, please subscribe on Patreon. Um, and uh, check out those books. Make great gifts for people. Make great gifts for yourself. Again, I the the value you're getting for the price you're paying is I mean it, it's not even close, right? Like if you're spending <laughs> if you're spending hundred fifty dollars for race entry, you can get all of my books for under that amount. And uh, I guarantee your placement will improve if you take some of the lessons from my book and apply them to your race. All right, that's it. Check the show notes tomorrow. Check out uh, the OCR report for the OCR report podcast, and then close it out the month on the 30th with our friends, obstacle running adventures, Mike Stefano, and Caitlin Ritter or Caitlin Stefano. She changed her name. I don't know. They're married though. Congratulations. Uh, you can go check out obstacle running adventures. Go check them out over there. They just published, I think their 400th episode and they'll probably be at like 410 by the time this airs, uh, which is just, it, for those who do podcasting, know this how the insane amount of work it takes to not only produce episode, but then edit, publish, and then be consistent at it. As you move around in life, change jobs, have kids, get married, race on the weekends, do whatever you do for fun. It is a lot of work. And honestly, it is. There's also, sometimes there's not a lot of feedback, and there's not a lot of perks, or it doesn't seem like a lot of perks directly related to obstacle course racing. However, you can use that as a platform to get other perks, like I talk about in the sponsored athlete. Check out the books. Check out the links below. Listen to Thirty Podcast has September as part of the OCR report, and we will see you in October. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube. Catch everyone later. Out.